When most leaders talk about Priscilla and Aquila, they consider them to be husband and wife preachers who traveled with Paul spreading the good news or the gospel. They also say that they are pastors who ran a church out of their home with Priscilla being more versed in the scriptures than her husband, which is why her name is listed first. But is any of this even true? Rather than us just accepting what they say because it sounds good or because they say it with such confidence, let's do what the Bereans did in the Bible and search the scriptures to see what is true. Let's avoid adding what isn't written. Let's accept what is given and let's not make excuses as to why we can't accept what we can clearly see with our eyes. If it isn't written, then we can't say that it happened. Let's begin with how Paul met Priscilla and Aquila. In Acts chapter 18, verses 1, it says this, After these things, Paul departed from Athens and went to Corinth. And he found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontius, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because Claudius had commanded all the Jews to depart from Rome. And he came to them. So because he was of the same trade, he stayed with them and worked, for by occupation they were tent makers. Let's break this down. In these verses, we see that Paul met Priscilla and Aquila in Corinth after Emperor Claudius commanded all of the Jews to leave. And we see that Paul lived with them while also working on building tents since they had the same profession. Make note of this because them having the same job will help us answer some questions later. Let's take a look at what Paul was doing. And verse 4 said, and he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath and persuaded both Jews and Greeks. When Silas and Timothy had come from Macedonia, Paul was compelled by the Spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus is the Christ. But when they opposed him and blasphemed, he shook his garments and said to them, Your blood be upon your own heads. I am clean. From now on, I will go to the Gentiles. As the scripture just showed, even though Paul is living with them, he is the one, he is the only one shown to be preaching in the synagogue to the people every Sabbath. And we know that what he was doing was preaching because verse 4 said that Paul reasoned with them. The word reasoned, as you can see, in Greek means to preach. But what we don't see in any of these scriptures is any mention of Priscilla or Aquila doing it with him. If it doesn't say that they were doing it, then we don't get to add it. We have to accept only what is written. Let's keep going. And he departed from there and entered the house of a certain man named Justice, one who worshiped God, whose house was next door to the synagogue. Then Crispus, the ruler of the synagogue, believed on the Lord with all his household, and many of the Corinthians hearing believed and were baptized. I can't stress this enough. If you've watched my other videos, then you know how I feel about baptism. This is yet another example of people believing and getting baptized. Don't let them convince you that it isn't important. Paul is doing what Mark 16 and 16 said. And also, let me bring this to your attention. The ruler of the synagogue wasn't saved prior to meeting Paul which highlights the fact that just because you rule or own a church doesn't automatically mean that you're a believer or that you're even a pastor. You'll understand why I'm saying this towards the end of the video, but let's jump to verse 11. And he continued there a year and six months teaching the word of God among them. If Priscilla and Aquila had been preaching with Paul, especially after being with him over the course of a year and six months, Paul would have said it. If Paul made sure that we knew that he was preaching and testifying in the synagogue, don't you think that he would have wanted us to know that the husband and wife who risked their life saving him to risk their life for him were beside him spreading the gospel? Paul didn't say it because that wasn't how they helped the church. Again, if it isn't written, then we can't say that they were. Verse 12 through 7. 
In verse 12 through 7, we see that it provides us with more information that only Paul was preaching. And we know this because it was only him that the Jews were trying to punish. And he is the one that they ended up beating in secret because of what he was teaching. Let's read verse 18 because it gives us a major piece of information. It said, so Paul still remained a good while. Then he took leave of the brethren and sailed for Syria, and Priscilla and Aquila were with him. He had his hair cut off at Sincrea, for he had taken a vow, and he came to Ephesus and left them there. But he himself entered the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. So many people point out that Priscilla and Aquila traveled the world preaching with Paul the gospel. But I have yet to see that in scripture. Did they travel with him? Yes. But when it came to the word being spread, as verse 19 said, Paul is the only one who would leave and go to the synagogue and preach to the Jews. These are the puzzle pieces that people keep missing. And without these pieces, the correct pieces, people will believe something that the scriptures didn't say. And as we go further, we see that Paul, after leaving Ephesus, went city to city, strengthening the disciples. No scripture said that all three of them did this. Every verse specifically names Paul as the one to go out and preach to the Jews. Now, let's look at Priscilla and Aquila's encounter with Paul. It's in verse 24. It says, Now a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria, an eloquent man and mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. This man had been instructed in the way of the Lord and being fervent in the spirit. He spoke and taught accurately the things of the Lord, though he only knew the baptism of John. So he began to speak boldly in the synagogue. When Aquila and Priscilla heard him, they took him aside and explained to him the way of God more accurately. I like Apollos. Not only was he mighty in the scriptures, but he taught them accurately as well. This is something that we should all seek to do. Now, if we look at these verses, we see that Apollos was in the middle of doing what these leaders are claiming that Priscilla and Aquila did. He's preaching to the people in the synagogue about the baptism of John. If you notice, we're being told about Paul and Apollos preaching and teaching in the church, but we are still seeing nothing that says that Priscilla and Aquila did the same thing. It's something to pay attention to because again, as I keep saying, if it isn't written, then it didn't happen. This is why it is so important to study and break down the meaning of the words we see because if it says that Apollos taught the scriptures and that Aquila and Priscilla explained to him the ways of God more accurately, then the only way that we will know if these two words are the same or different is to look. And when we compare these two words, we see that they are different in Greek and that the word for taught is referring to the written word of God. But explained, which is what they did, means to set forth expound or to explain. None of which, if you look at the options, includes preaching or teaching. This shows us that what Apollos was doing is different from what Priscilla and Aquila did. Imagine you spent a year and a half with Paul and you heard him give numerous sermons on who Christ is and how he rose from the grave. And then one day while in the synagogue, you hear someone preaching an incomplete message, an accurate one, but incomplete. You hear them preaching about the one who is to come, just like John the Baptist did. Would you not let them know that there is more to the story? Would you not help fill in the blanks? Because that's what they did. And because Apollos was willing to receive their help, he would go on to be known as a mighty preacher and teacher of God's word. Now, let's take a look at the church that most are saying that the two of them pastored together. Let's read Romans chapter 16, verses 3 through 5. Paul said, Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my fellow workers in Christ, who risked their own necks for my life, to whom not only I give thanks, but also the churches of the Gentiles. Likewise, greet the church that is in their house, Greet my beloved Epinetus, who is the first fruits of a child to Christ. 
This is another example of assuming something means what it doesn't. The rule of thumb is that everything must be confirmed by the witness of two or three. This means that if you believe that a scripture is saying something, you must find another scripture to support it. Verse 3 said, greet Priscilla and Aquila, my fellow workers in Christ. But if I can be real with you, the only reason you would see this word and think that it means preaching is if you already thought they were or was told that they were by someone else. Because this verse didn't say anything about them preaching and no example was given to help us know in what way they were fellow workers. To say that they were preaching is yet again adding something that isn't written. The only thing that we were ever told about them working together on is that all three of them were tent makers. And we also know from scripture that Paul made it clear that the way that he provided for himself and others is with the hard work of his hands. There is no question that he was referring to tent making because we were never told of him having another profession or skill. When it comes to verse four, we were never given the answer. We don't know at what point or how they risked their lives for Paul and the Gentiles. We only know that whatever it was, Paul and the Gentiles were thankful for their help. And in verse 5, when Paul said that he greets the church that meets at their house, this is not Paul saying that they're leaders because, again, no other scripture supports that. You have to have the second witness. It is instead him acknowledging their willingness to support the body of Christ by allowing a church to meet in their home. To say that they pastored the church simply because it met in their house would be a huge exaggeration. That's like saying that everyone who owns a church building is a pastor. It just isn't true. Paul is instead showing his love and appreciation for them, just like he did with the other 20 plus women that he acknowledged for their help in his letter to Rome. Priscilla and Aquila showed the same love to the church that Paul received when they allowed him to live with them for a year and a half while working together. To say that they not only preached but also pastored the church contradicts the very words of Timothy and Paul. There would be no reason for them to list the qualifications of being a leader in the church if Priscilla was already a leader herself. Why would they say that a bishop, pastor, elder, and deacon all have to be the husband of one wife if married? If their friend Priscilla was already a woman leader, and remember I said their friend, do you see the confusion? If Timothy and Paul are telling the women to remain silent in the church, that the men are the head of the household and that they can't preach or teach, then why would they be traveling around with a woman who is doing everything that they said isn't allowed? They wouldn't. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 10 through 17 says that, Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Priscilla and Aquila both knew Paul, Timothy, and Apollos were strong, battle-tested men. They absolutely, there is absolutely no way that they would have been allowing Priscilla to go against scripture, and there is no way that Priscilla would have wanted to. Just think about it, it doesn't add up nor does it make sense. Priscilla has been lied on so that the enemy could push the narrative that God has called everyone, regardless of sex, to preach. And I still haven't seen that in scripture. I haven't found where she was called or was doing it in scripture. Have you? So to sum all of this up, it is clear that Aquila and Priscilla are very helpful or were very helpful to the body of Christ. We don't know all of the ways they were helpful because the Bible doesn't say. But we do know that they were helpful by opening their doors for the church, tent making with Paul, and allowing him to stay with them while he went out and spread the gospel. In these passages, we saw that there are two people preaching, and that is Paul and Apollos. Paul said, I planted, Apollos warded, but God gave the increase. Paul clearly loved and appreciated the women he had around him. He has a whole chapter dedicated to acknowledging and thanking them and even said that they helped save his life. 
talk about, don't tell me he doesn't appreciate women. But despite his love for them, he still said that in the church, they are to remain silent. And it is because people don't understand that it isn't his words. These aren't his words. If they would just read verse 37, they would see that it isn't Paul saying that it's God. Verse 37 said, if anyone thinks they are a prophet or otherwise gifted by the spirit, let them acknowledge that what I am writing to you is the Lord's command. This is why I keep saying that people are fighting against God. Here comes verse 38. This is the warning. But if anyone ignores this, they will themselves be ignored. The other versions say that they will not be acknowledged or recognized. This means that anything you do in disobedience will not be accepted. You can save all the people you want. You can do all the different things that you want in the church. And guess what? If it's done in disobedience, you're doing nothing for God. God has said he will not accept it. God is a God of order. He didn't leave the passages out calling women to preach by mistake. They're not in the Bible because that's not the job that he was giving them to do. How many examples do I have to give you before you believe me? Please like, subscribe, and leave a comment. My name is Jeremiah, and as always, this is The Spoken Word, where I'm hoping that you won't allow something that can't be found in here to have more authority than what is already written. Be safe. I'll see you next time.